So, you want to know how to create a sketch map? Well then you've come to the right place. So the first thing I had to do in order to create the sketch map was go out and take loads of photos of the area. So here I've got loads of different photos of a place in Rotherham called Clifton Park. And I took photos of all the major landmarks that I could see. So I took a picture of the gate, some of the war memorial, a fountain, the nearby museum and a bandstand. If there are no buildings where you're creating your sketch map, try to find some unique things. It might be a special type of tree, it might be a fallen log, it might be a park bench. Find anything that you feel could be a special feature on your map. Now, as you're taking these photos of all the important landmarks that you can see in your space, you will also need to take different measurements. So in this case, you can see I've got a trundle wheel, I've got a meter stick, some string or rope, and you will also need a compass. Now firstly, a trunter wheel, meter stick and string are brilliant pieces of equipment in order to measure the distance between different landmarks or the size of landmarks. So for instance, in my case, I used a trunter wheel to measure the size of different, pay or different paths that are gonna appear on my map. We also used the trunter wheel or the rope to measure the distance between the park gate and a fountain. So we, can, we knew exactly how far apart each of these landmarks were. Now you'll also need a compass because you'll again you'll need to be able to tell whether or not a certain, where the, which direction sorry a landmark is away from another one. So for instance in my map I know there's a park gate but there was also a fountain and using a compass I worked out that the fountain was in fact in an easterly direction in an easterly direction from the park gate. So once you've got all your photos of your landmarks and all the measurements that you need to create your sketch map, what you'll need then is squared paper. All right, and here I've got some squared paper. Now, if you don't have any squared paper, you can always make it yourself. And what I try to aim for is to make sure that each square on my map is about a centimeter large, and I'll explain why later. So once you've got some squared paper, what you then need to do is be able to label the northings and eastings. So the northings, is basically the y-axis going up here. The eastings or the x-axis goes along the bottom here. All right. Now on different maps you might see them labeled with letters and numbers or vice versa or sometimes with coordinates you can also get just numbers along the eastings and numbers along the northings like so. Once you've finish step one and you've labeled your northings and your easterns on your map. Step two is I can create symbols for the key landmarks. So here's my initial key before I started drawing my map. Okay now you remember I took a picture of a park gate so this is my symbol for a park gate. There are roads nearby so I've made sure a symbol for roads. There's a museum, a fountain, the bandstand, the river and the path. We're also going to make sure that next to our key and next to our map We've drawn some compass bearings, something that looks a bit like this. So we've got northeast, southwest, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. The reason for it being is because you need people to be able to use your map and know in which direction they're traveling. So in my case, they might need to know that to the east of the park gate, there is a fountain. And to the southeast of the park gate, all right, there's also the museum. So please make sure that you remember these two key things. Uh, key with all your symbols and a compass somewhere near your map. Step three, I can decide on the scale of my map. So once you've done your northings and eastings, you've created a key for your map, what you then need to do is then decide, right, with all these measurements that you've got, you need to decide how big is each square on your map going to be. So in this case, if you remember, I said that each square on my map here is about one centimeter big all right now i know for a fact that a lot of my landmarks are quite a big distance away from each other so what i decided to do is right i'm going to say that one centimeter on my map is equal to or the same as 20 meters all right now how do we write that well there's two ways we could either write it as one centimeter and we use this symbol here to represent is the same as so one centimeter is the same as 20 meters on my map. So each one of these squares is 20 meters. You could also write it as a ratio of one to 2000. The reason being 
is because there is one centimeter, okay, to every 2,000 centimeters, as there is 2,000 centimeters in 20 meters. Right, now that I've got a key, I've got my grid, and I know exactly how large each square represents, I can then do step four. I can use the photos, my measurements, and compass directions to start plotting the landmarks accurately. So here, just a quick example, on my map, I've got the gate here. Okay, I also know, like I mentioned earlier, that the fountain in the park was in an easterly direction. So if north is going in this direction, then in an easterly direction, we found our fountain. I also worked out that the fountain was was about 80 meters away from the park gate. So in an easterly direction from my, uh, from my symbol for a park gate, we've gone 20, 40, 60, 80 meters across in an easterly direction, and we have our park fountain. All right. You also notice I've plotted on here uh, the museum as well. So that's my key symbol for the museum. And I know for a fact, using my compass bearings, that was in a southeasterly direction from the park gate. Now, using the chunder wheel, I also worked out there was about 140 meters away from the park gate. And you can check that because each square is 20 meters. That's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140 meters away. Here you can see my almost finished sketch map. I've finished putting on all my landmarks. So I've got the park gate, the bandstand, I've got the fountain over here, a river there, and I've got the museum. We've also got two major roads. We've also got all the paths. Okay, now we've done the best we can. Now remember, it is a sketch map, so it's not going to be, it's about as accurate as you can possibly make it. We've measured out the distance using a ruler of the size of each of these paths to almost as accurate as possible. Okay, and I've done my best when I was at the park to map out what direction each path almost went in. So we walked along all as many paths as we could to try to plot out as much of it as possible. All right, but we also remember this is where photos are a big, big help. And lastly, with step five, I can use color to add relevant detail to my map. So now that we've finished all of the plotting out of the landmarks and the correct measurements, we can now go back through and use color to represent different objects. So as you notice that I've colored in the roads in gray, we've got the paths here in the park in purple, so you can see exactly where all the paths are. We've made sure to color in the river, okay? And you notice that we've used two different shades of green here in the park. What do you think those different shades of green might actually stand for? Well, here you can see that I've actually gone back and I've actually updated my key here with all the correct color for the symbols as well as making sure that I've just told everyone, right, if you can see this color green here on my map, it basically means it's all grass. Okay, these are all the fields in the park. And where possible, I've also used this shade of green to represent where there's dense woods. So around here, there's a lot of trees, especially around the river here, and alongside the path here, there's a lot of trees, there's a lot of woods as well. Um, key thing here that you need to notice as well is I've also made sure to put next to my map the compass band so everyone knows exactly which direction is north which direction is south east and west so we can see here that the bandstand here is in a north easterly direction we can see that the park fountain like mentioned before is in an easterly direction from the park gate and i've also made sure next to my map to tell everyone what this scale is so like i mentioned earlier in the video is that one centimeter so in this case one centimeter here is equivalent to 20 meters and here I've shown a little line here, so you could actually use a piece of paper or a ruler to measure that, that's exactly one centimeter, and that represents 20 meters. So I hope you found this video helpful in creating your own sketch map, and please check back for any of the other useful videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Uh, please feel free to watch the video again if you need to repeat anything that we've said. Otherwise, good luck, and I look forward to seeing any of your brilliant sketch maps that you actually make.